Hi everyone, my name is Kenrick and welcome to Travel and Live Free. In this video, we're gonna cover my country number 27 to visit every single country in the world and that country is Vietnam. Now Vietnam is one of those countries that I actually spent a lot of time in during my one year trip around the world. As a matter of fact, I went back there two years after I came back from my one year journey around the world and I got to see another place in Vietnam. In this video, we're gonna be covering several places in Vietnam. The first one is gonna be Da Nang, which is the bulk of the time that I spent during my one year trip. I was in Da Nang for 27 days because I wanted to check out what the digital nomad lifestyle is like in Da Nang. While I was in Da Nang, I also got a chance to see Hoi An and buy a suit there. And on my last three days on my trip to Vietnam, I went to Hanoi and saw Ha Long Bay and hanged out with a friend that lives in Hanoi. Now, two years later, I went back to Vietnam with my girlfriend Karen and we got a chance to explore Nha Trang and spend eight days there. So in total, I've spent about 38 days in Vietnam. One of the things that you need to keep in mind when you go to Vietnam is that the people in the Ho Chi Minh airport are not very friendly. The first time I went there, I was treated very rudely and it makes you think that maybe the whole country is that rude as well, which is not true at all. Vietnam is one of the friendliest countries I've ever been to. Just do keep in mind that the people working in immigration are not very friendly, but once you get past immigration, the Vietnamese people are very friendly. As a matter of fact, a lot of my best friends growing up have been Vietnamese. So going to Vietnam has been a good chance for me to get to know more about my best friend's culture. Now the weird thing is, I have never actually explored Ho Chi Minh since going to Vietnam. So if I ever go back to Vietnam ever again, that's gonna be the place that I visit because I pretty much visit a lot of the big places in Vietnam except for Ho Chi Minh itself. Now the first time I went to Vietnam, after flying to Ho Chi Minh, the next day, I flew to Da Nang right away. My first three days in Da Nang was actually spent going to a place called Hoi An, which is famous because it's a historical site that was never destroyed during any of the wars. Hoi An is famous for suits, and when I went to Hoi An, that's exactly what I did. I found a shop in Hoi An that has the name called Peace Something, and I bought a suit from that place. I bargained down a three-piece suit that includes the pants, the blazer, the undershirt, a vest, and a tie. Now, to tell you the truth, several years later, after I came back to Canada and I got to use this suit, I would say the tie is not very durable and the undershirt was not the best. However, the blazer itself and the pants has been quite good and I'm very pleased with purchasing those pieces. Now, if you're buying a suit or a dress in Vietnam, you do need to bargain first and they will also ask you what type of quality that you would like to purchase. You can choose to buy a low quality suit or dress, a medium quality suit or dress, or a high quality suit or dress. Now, I actually had a friend that was traveling in Hoi An at the time and he recommended for me to buy the high quality suit because when you get a suit, it's gonna be something that you're gonna be wearing for the next eight to 10 years. So you might as well get something that's high quality so it's gonna last you a long time. And I'm thankful that I got a high quality suit and I paid 245 US dollars for it. And because to this day, I still use that suit. Now I did get that suit shipped to Canada and it cost me $70 US to ship it to Canada. And the reason why I got it shipped to Canada was because I was backpacking at the time and there's no way I can carry that suit with me. Now going to Hoi An from Da Nang is also a little bit tricky because there's a lot of scams when you're taking the bus. It's kind of funny too, because when I took the local bus, the first time I took it, they charge all the foreigners 50,000 Vietnamese dong to take this bus. However, because I was an Asian tourist, they charged me 40,000 Vietnamese dong. However, the real price is actually 30,000 Vietnamese dong, which they started charging me after I took the bus a few times. It's kind of weird that they have a price for white Westerners, for Asian tourists, and for locals. So do keep that in mind when you're traveling in Vietnam that there is a lot of scams that happen when you're traveling that country. After I got my suit and I finished exploring Hoi An, I spent the next month pretty much living in Da Nang and I've got to say that the people in Da Nang are actually really warm and really friendly. I used to frequent these two restaurants over and over again and I befriended the people working there. As a matter of fact, when I left the country, they were really sad when I left, which goes to show how genuine the people are in Vietnam. I rented an Airbnb for 27 days and the rate was pretty good. I think I paid just a little bit over $300 Canadian to have a private room with a washroom and a kitchenette. Now to tell you the truth, I never used a kitchen at once, so I should have never rented that because the street food in Vietnam are so cheap, there is never any reason for you to go cook your own food. I also rented a scooter when I was in Da Nang and this turned out to be a big mistake because I was scared to death to ride the scooter. I rode the scooter a few times 
and I was just too scared and I never rode it again, which wasted my money when I rented this scooter. I should have just rented it for a few days and that's it. So my advice to you is that if you're scared to ride the scooter, don't rent it because it's gonna be a waste of money. During my time in Vietnam living as a digital nomad, I spent my time pretty much just working all day catching up on some blogging. I also got a few paid gigs working as a travel blogger and I got paid to write those articles. For leisure, the main thing I did was I hanged out with the host of the Airbnb. So he took me to go play tennis, he took me to go play badminton, which was all pretty fun. All right, so me and Mick, Right there in the background. We're exploring this very random castle that we stumbled upon. Uh, it's right here in the background. You can kind of see it. There it is. And we're on the fourth floor. So this is actually the fourth floor of the castle. Um, we're kind of surprised because we didn't expect to see this in Da Nang. Like, you know, we thought Da Nang was a little peaceful city, nice beach. And suddenly, bam, there's a castle. You're like in an amusement park all of a sudden. But it's quite nice and we're going to continue exploring it in a second. Okay, so me and Mick are in this strange floor called the VIP room. And then I see this like random bed in the middle of the room and I don't know what it is. This is uh, another bedroom. This is called the clinic style room. I don't know what they call it, clinic style. Must be some like weird kinky stuff going in there. <laughs> is that where we came from? Is that the elevator? Yeah. Alright, so there's more hallways. Oh, no, 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 this is not the escalator. Okay. So we're gonna head over this way. And if you look at here, it looks like there was like a stag party here. And they haven't cleaned up yet. There's like a huge mess. So I think this floor is where people will hold a party and you can rent the whole place. But actually, to tell the truth, my time in Da Nang was pretty boring and I should have never stayed in Da Nang for so long. I think looking in hindsight, had I stayed in Vietnam, I should have stayed longer in Hanoi or Ho Chi Minh because I heard that those cities are more fun. Da Nang was pretty boring and pretty tame, to be honest. Now, the people there are really friendly and probably the friendliest people in the whole Vietnam. But it's not good to stay there because, like I said, it's not the funniest place to stay long term. After my 27 days in Da Nang was finished, I got a chance to go to Hanoi and I stayed over a friend's place. Now, this friend is actually a friend of a friend of mine who lives here in Vancouver. And he got me in contact with his friend and I stayed over at his apartment. And my friend also helped me book a tour to Halong Bay and I think the tour cost me about $30 Canadian for a full day tour. And that includes transportation from the city center going all the way to Halong Bay and back again. Now this trip was one of the most chaotic trip I've ever taken in my life. I actually did not like going to Halong Bay because of this trip. The trip already started chaotic right from the get-go because when they drove me to Halong Bay, they dropped me off in this random cafe and no one knew what to do with me. When the tour guide finally came to pick me up, he had no clue what to do and he just shoved me in the boat. And the ship that we were on was not very pleasant. It was really crowded and a lot of people hated the man that was running this boat. Halong Bay itself was nice, but I wouldn't say it's one of the best seven wonders of nature. There's a lot of wonders of nature that's a lot better than Halong Bay. I actually think Halong Bay is one of the worst wonders of nature. Now, with that being said, I do love Vietnam. It's just that I don't think this is one of the best wonders of nature in the world. Now, the tour guide tried to scam me at the end because he was gonna charge me money to go back to Hanoi. After arguing with him for some time, he finally agreed that, okay, fine, it's part of what you paid and I'll take you to Hanoi. When I was back in Hanoi, I took a taxi there that tried to scam me and one of the ways that I got around this scam from this damn taxi driver was I told him that Vietnam was number one and then he started laughing and he stopped scamming me. 
My friend also took me around in Hanoi to eat at local food places and it was really nice. One of the things that I noticed while traveling Hanoi was that people tend to be more grumpy in Hanoi compared to Ho Chi Minh or Da Nang. So it's just one of those things that I noticed. I'm not sure why they're more grumpy, but maybe it's the weather, they don't get enough sun, they don't get enough vitamin D, but they just seem more grumpy when I went to Hanoi. With that being said, I do have a lot of friends from Northern Vietnam and they're pretty chill. So I'm not sure if that's just those people that I've met and I was unlucky when I went there. After my trip to Hanoi and Halong Bay, I went to South Korea. And it wasn't until two years later that I went back to Vietnam, this time with my girlfriend, and we got a chance to spend eight days in Nha Trang. While we were in Nha Trang, I got a chance to redeem seven nights for free using the Marriott hotel and air package. This was such a nice trip because typically me and my girlfriend get beaten up when we travel because we do a lot of adventure travel. So for this time, we wanted to do a Southeast Asian relaxing kind of trip. And it was the perfect trip because we stayed in this nice hotel, we got an awesome breakfast every day, and we did some city sightseeing stuff. So for the city tour, the places that we saw was the Ponegar Tower. We also got a chance to see the Long Son Pagoda, which actually was better than I thought. And me and Karen actually thought that the Long Son Pagoda was the best of the three churches that we visited in Nha Trang. And the third one is the Christ the King Church. Now the Christ the King Church was probably the most boring of the three places, but it was still neat to see when you're doing your own city tour. We also got a chance to see the National Oceanographic Museum, and that place was pretty much just a giant aquarium. Oh, there we go, trying to do it. Hey, he's almost got it. We also got a chance to spend a whole day at Vin Pearl, which is this giant amusement park, which is pretty much like the Disneyland of Vietnam. So there was a lot of rides when we went there. We got a chance to eat some food there. Now, Vin Pearl is very expensive, so I wouldn't recommend you go there unless you are willing to shell out a lot of money. There's also quite a bit of mosquitoes there, so it's an okay place to visit if you're already in Nha because it's actually one of the biggest sightseeing spot there. Just do keep in mind that it's not a cheap place to visit. Now, hands down, the biggest and the best thing to do while you're traveling in Nha is eating street food. Me and Karen stumbled in a few places that's kind of like a hole in a wall, and I won't really say hole in a wall, but really a big warehouse where people sit on tiny little plastic chairs and tiny little tables, and they serve you food, and you purchase food by Kilo. And the food there was so good. We ate so many delicious seafood. We ate a lot of delicious pho on different street food places. And the street food scene in Nha Trang is amazing. That's definitely gonna be the number one thing that you should do should you ever go to Nha Trang, is just go nuts on eating street food. Overall, our trip in Vietnam was fantastic. I would definitely go back to Vietnam again because I liked it. Do keep in mind, like I said, that the immigration people are not very friendly. I still remember when I took Karen the first time to the Ho Chi Minh airport, I told her that people are not going to be friendly. And guess what? She felt that unfriendliness and she's saying, I don't like the vibe of this country. And I said to her, don't worry, it's just the immigration. Once you get to the country itself, people are really nice. And they were really nice. One of the best ways to get around Vietnam also is to use the app. I think the app is called Grab. And pretty much it's like Uber, but you pay them in cash. Anyways, that's about it for my trip to Vietnam. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave your comments below. And don't forget to sign up to our Travel and Live Free newsletter where you can get a 10-step cheat sheet on how to travel around the world. You'll also get the latest tips and strategies on how to save money on travel for Canadians, how to go on around the world travel for Canadians, 
and how to use travel to get more freedom in your life as a Canadian. You can sign up for the newsletter in the description below. Until next time, I'll see you then.